It is time now to take a look at stories making the headlines on Nigerian newspapers. And I have with me in the studio in-house uh, analyst Obani Akinwali as well as uh, Dikbo Uyuwole to help us look through the papers this morning. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, we head straight to the papers and I begin with uh, the Nation newspaper. Uh, ASU begins mobilization for another strike in Varsity's uh, final decision slated for February the 14th. ASU begins mobilization for another strike in Varsity's final decision slated for February the 14th. All right, to the first news newspaper now, ASU under pressure to shelve strike. ASU under pressure to shelve strike. You find the details on the pages of the first news uh, newspaper. To the Daily Trust now, bandits <coughs> closing in on Kaduna Metropolis as kidnappers vacate forests due to military operations. We are not sleeping, Kaduna government uh, police uh, responding. You find that on the front page of the Daily Trust. Uh, bandits closing in on Kaduna Metropolis all details on the pages of the front uh, uh, daily trust all right we move to the blueprint now apc national convention plot to jettison zoning pickings governors others intensify lobby uh, buhari still holds the acceepc <coughs> uh, throw national working committee positions open party chieftains tells uh, leaders you find the details on the pages of the blueprint to the vanguard uh, newspaper now Presidency, PDP, APC playing games with zoning sores, uh, adding adds uh, zoning not making headway because PDP governors want to detect uh, process. A PDP Mizun ticket one week to primaries, September date likely for presidential primaries. All of the details on the pages of the Vanguard newspaper. To the Nigerian Tribune now, 2023 presidency plot against the Tiku Thickings, a Tiku or Tom Exchange words over Fulani terror claim. All right, to the leadership newspaper now, 2023 presidency, uncertainty over Jonathan's PDP membership. Ex-president has not resigned from the party aid. We are not aware of his resignation, PDP speaking. To this Nigeria newspaper now, 2023 APC's Jonathan Joker. Lobbyists intensify effort, woo north. Jonathan won't quit, PDP says Reno Mockery. Uh, why his return will not fly or to banjo others. To the front page of the Punch newspaper, NMIC portal breaks down. Banks, telcos, passports, issuance suffer. Uh, downtime enters six day. MTN, Glow, Airtel, other suspend seem replacement acquisition. Immigration may rebook passport applicants' uh, appointments as glitch stores NIN verification. Telcos lose millions. Customers' verification affected. And IMC apologizes as engineers' battle crisis. To the Guardian newspaper now, Nigeria's domain name fails to gain traction, attracts 184,341 users. Uh, businesses worry about inconsistent government policies. That NG is uh, 0 0.00054353 of 365 uh, million worlds registered CCT Limited. Uh, INEC, banks, e commerce firms, MDAs, dealadopt.com.net.org. Country loses millions of dollars to foreign adoption. All right, to the front page of the business day now. Dangote refinery to curb petrol import subsidy impact muted. To the Daily Independent, regulation damaged FX markets may undervalue banks. Analysts say with Basel three lower liquidity lenders at risk of pressured margins. National Economy Customs Manual Valuation Slows Ease of Doing Business at uh, Ports. Shippers pay for unnecessary demurrage storage facilities. You find all of the details on the front page of the National Economy. To the News Direct now, f uh, 400 Naira per litre diesel price exposes import-driven deregulation dangers, experts speaking. To the business AM, analysts worry as reserves down $506.3 million in 30 days. And finally, on the front page of the Abuja Inquirer, 
473 candidates jostle for 68 positions with only 8.9% female participation. That's uh, for the Federal Capital Territory Council poll there. All right, gentlemen, let's look at uh, some of the stories that are making headlines uh, this morning. And we'll begin with uh, the APC National Convention. Uh, plot uh, in, on the front page of the blueprint, it says uh, APC National Convention plot to jettison zoning uh, thickings. Governors orders uh, intensifying their lobby. Uh, we'll recall that uh, the party has said that uh, their convention is going to hold this month, sometime this month, I think the 26th or so. And uh, we have seen, we have begun to see the horse trading blocks, the interests, all of it. Uh, there's been speculations and all of that. And uh, there are those who are saying governors are wielding so much power and interest. Others say that the president holds the aces. But uh, let's get your perception. Uh, let me begin with you, Obani, to what is going on with the National Convention of the APC. Now, uh, I think uh, I'm not sure whether Blueprint, because I've not gone through the details of the Blueprint, but I can tell you without missing what that there is no plot to jettison any zoning in APC. Hmm. If you look at all the uh, prominent members contesting for the post of the national chairman of the party, majority are from North Central. And they are former governors, uh, current or, or former senators, former deputy chairmen of CPCs and whatever. So the handwriting is very, very clear that this time around, the national chairmanship position of APC is going to the north. Hmm. Where in the north, we will not say because you still have the like of Ali Sharif from northeast. Uh, you have a couple of guys from Karuna from Northwest and a whole lot of them from the North Central. So the die is cast in reality to the North Central. Now, what it automatically means is that if there are that array of candidates contesting for the president for the chairman of the party from the north, apparently the deputy national chairman of the party will come from the south. Right. The, the national secretary of the party will come from the south. And at the moment, all odd favors the current acting secretary of the CEPPC, mm. that's uh, Senator John Apanodude, Ap the man from uh, Akwaibom, to be the one substantive secretary for the party. So to say they are jettisoning that is on the other side, that is not true. APC has shown clearly that the national chairman's position of the party, it could change at the 11th hour, but it stands now that on the governor's power, we have said it. There is only one third force in this country after the presidency. Oh. That's the governor's forum. And it's because where our political system is being crafted. You said governors are the leaders of party in all states. So why do we now cry over his speech milk that you've already conceded that position to them? Irrespective of who you are, what you are in the party, as long as your state has a sitting governor, the governor becomes the head of the party, is the party leader. So as such, if you have considered the leadership to him, he will place the pipe at the stage with you. Mm. So I heard. So coming out to say the governor, the governor is not doing anything strange. The party, either APC or PDP, has considered the leadership of the party to them. And it's on to where to point whereby the common man in the party, the time he becomes his world representative, that is the only point where the party will belong to the people. Mm. But whereby you have the money bags, the political class, the time who becomes the world chairman, the world councillors, the world leaders, you continue, continue to have what we have. Even let the best of political stuff come into the. Remember during your bachelor your time, you can't contest for council law if a bachelor did not approve. <laughs> so it is something that has been playing on our democratic prison. Is because we still have a bit of military in terms of the way we practice our democracy. So the command comes from the top down. And, goes and down. President Bari said he mm. wants the party to be bottom up. Oh. But nonetheless, at every point the party is in crisis. You see three governors, three musketeers from the north. The go chairman, the KB and the government go to the governor. The next meeting you see governor from Ikiti and a few other people go to the governor. Yes, one from the part from the bottom to the top. So why would we even ourselves? They should just leave all these uh, shenanigans <laughs> and headline grabbing. Well, let's get the cross perspective to, to this. <coughs> We've been me. seeing the horse trading and all of it. The yes. interest really, really playing out. And the governors are intensifying their lobbying. And I'm wondering mm. if you are also on his side saying that uh, this uh, issue of uh, zoning will not uh, is not in an issue like he said that they are not jettisoning that but there are those who believe that from the interests that are coming up that might be thrown out of the window well like he said i don't believe that um, they are going to throw that out of the window because 
up until now, there have been a lot of firm um, uh, negotiations. But of course, we know in politics that anything can happen at the very last minute. So um, we've been looking very keenly at how this all will play out. But I'd also like to speak on the issue of the governors having so much influence. I mean, what do you, what do you really expect, realistically, with the way our political structure is, um, is designed in itself? So yes, if the governor in themselves are the leaders of the party in every state that they find themselves, they will wield that influence. So if, they, if all the power seems to have incited to them and then they get to determine who is what in the party mm. and not the people, they will throw that weight around. Or what's the point of having power anyway if you can't make use of it? Mm. So it's really, it's really just what it is. They have the power. It is legal. It is the way the structure has been designed. So they will throw that weight around. So I really don't see why there's any cause for alarm with this because it's not something new mm. and it's not just starting. So there's really nothing to be alarmed about about it. Right. Now, th there are also calls that uh, the National Working Committee positions to, should be thrown open. Mm -hmm. uh, the leaders seem to be wanting to determine who, take, who takes what. As it is, this is not new, actually. As there's, uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing new. There's so, nothing so the party open. should now, by this at uh, this point, should mm -hmm. know how to handle some of these issues. There is already there's already uh, uh, laws governing each political party. So, yeah. And the law says, if you have the national chairman from the north. The deputy national chairman will come from the south. Mm. That's the most senior national deputy national chairman. You know, they used to have two national deputy national chairman, right. north and south. Mm. The most senior will be the one from the south. That's how Secondos became the acting chairman of the party. Akiwong became, and what have you. Mm. Now, if the secretary of the party is from the south, the deputy secretary of the party will come from the north. So, the constitution of each party has actually allocated how the power rotation and power sharing suffice but so interest seems to be coming to play uh, the, the, the only interest that comes yeah. to play is uh is going to be in terms of party agreement say for example senator uh musa from uh, niger state who is very very popular with the senators mm -hmm. and popular with certain pablo or from governor and senator almakura who happens to be a strong cpc person or the likes of munia dafi who happens to be a fct and an ally of ribadu so what happened now is that if perhaps Team Munir Dafi, say ACM block, decided to concede or to align with, say, Al Makura of uh, David Musa of Niger State. Mm. What are you going to concede for us? That's the only thing that is going to happen. You can't take what you can't have a national chairman not and deputy national chairman one not. It mm -hmm. is not possible. So, what is now going to happen is alignment and realignment. What are you going to give me? I don't forget, even within those party structures, there are still caucuses within. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to give us this, <coughs> what are we going to get back? So the issue of who gets what does not suffice. What happens is that which caucus within the political structure, because you remember that APC as it were is amalgamation of various interests. Yes. APC, CPC, now you have uh, Oyegun, which was a, an MPP candidate as the chairman. Mm. You have Osho Molly, who was an ACN candidate. Now the next one is either MPDP or CPC. So they always have that structure in terms of how they want to uh, do their structure. So what is now going to be important is how do you ensure that every interest is it's catered for? Care. But the, 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 the obvious is also stares in our face that the interest that will be catered for is the interest of the governor. Because some of the governors have been, you know, you know, the retire, you know retirement benefit for our governors in Nigeria, the National Assembly. So some of them that are retired that will resume to their pension scheme in the, in the Senate will already be ensuring that whoever becomes the National Executive Officers were able to do their bidding in such a way that when they are leaving their seat as governor of second term, they go to the National Assembly, which is traditionally becoming a retirement plan for mm -hmm. the governors, and be able to continue uh, with a monument, collecting allowance as ex governors, and also collecting allowances as a senator, changing the for four years. So, what is important now is how will governor be able to cement the address? And if you look at what happened to the likes of Governor Ibukula and most of Ogo State, every governor now in power will want to ensure that whoever succeeds them. They are able to ensure that they do not throw them out of the throw them on the bus. Look at what's happened between Inoa Yaya of Kumbi State and Senator mm -hmm. Dajuma Goje, or what's happened between Shekara Ugaya and, uh, and Governor Ganduje. It's obvious that every what we are talking about centers about power. Mm -hmm. And the people want to remain yeah. in power perpetually. So yeah. there is no issue about how power is being rotated within political class. Right. Um, do you want to weigh in on that before we move oh, no. forward? 
<laughs> right. Let's quickly move to this uh, issue on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Uh, ASU begins mobilization for another strike in universities. Uh, their final decision will be uh, February 14th, but it declared today work free day for some of the for its staffers uh, and uh, across universities. And I'm wondering what you see happening, <laughs> Dipo. Another as we strike. How long are we going to keep going on with this? And of course, if you go through the details of it, it will be with the qualms with the federal government. Yes, that they are the not memorandum of understanding or action that they agreed with the government and how the government is not meeting up with the demands. Which basically. is which has become a constant theme, and I think that even for the sake of the optics, if not for the sake of integrity, it is becoming very embarrassing. That every single time they go on strike, you bring them to the table to have a conversation, you have certain agreements, and then to execute those agreements is a problem. Now we're starting to look like we're going to have at least two to three, if not four, hour strikes within a year. It's becoming, it's becoming a calendared event. Mm -hmm. Can we get serious and, um, and have these conversations <coughs> going and execute what it is we agreed upon? What's the point of agreeing upon something when you know you're not going to execute it? Is it just get them off the streets and back into the, uh, and back into the classrooms? It's not good enough. Mm. Because we also need to understand that they're not just negotiating with people, but you are also working against the time of a lot of people. You're working on the future of Nigerians. There are a lot of young Nigerians, people who are supposed to be in, in, in the university for four-year courses, end up spending six, seven years. And then as employers of labor, we end up saying that, okay, you know what, the maximum age <laughs> to recruit you is 26, 27. Mm -hmm. But you have someone who got into school maybe at the age of 20, who's saying, okay, maybe at the age of 24, I'll be done with school and don't, they don't leave school till 27, and then they have to go into NYSE. And then we start to have all these conversations all over again with unemployment and employability and all of that. It's really not good enough. Mm -hmm. Because in terms of the quality of, the of, of, the, of, of what we get in the educational system, how does it even make sense where you have uh, lectures going on for a period of time, and then there's a long break for a period of time, and then lectures continue, which typically they come back and they have to write exams. Yeah. That's what yeah. happens. Yeah. Lectures barely continue again after a long gas strike. They come back, they write exams. Um, in some cases, they are mass failures because what you have is certain lecturers just throw the handouts at them and tell them to go study up. And then what you haven't been taught per se, how were you expected and to then perform? And out half-baked. Half-baked graduates baked. who then go into the marketplace to give us half-baked outcomes. So in the end, all these things, they cascade across every single person, not just in the educational sector, but into the marketplace, into the economy, into the productivity of the entire system. So they need to get serious about this entire conversation with ASU, and I think enough is enough. Enough is enough. It is very exhausting every single time we hear that ASU is going on strike, ASU is going on strike, <coughs> ASU is going on strike. You have a lot of um, planning that is disrupted. You have a lot of school calendars that, that, that have mm. been, been disrupted. People that are supposed to go for convocation at a certain period can't go for that convocation. Certain people have scholarships before they graduate from university. They don't meet up with the timelines. All these things affect people. We need to understand that we're dealing with the lives of people in real time. And we need to get serious with this entire conversation around ASO agreements. If you know you're not going to execute whatever it is you, are, you agree with them, let them know. If you know that it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer for you, the deal doesn't work. Let them know it doesn't work for you. Right. It's really just, it's, it comes from a sense of decency. If we agree on something, each side should ensure that they, that they carry out their own side of, side of the deal. Mm. Right, right. Uh, Obani, I wonder how you, you'd like to weigh in on this as well. Uh, the most embarrassing part of this, uh, this ASU strike is uh, I've seen it becoming what we call Sunday, Sunday, Dalla Prim. <laughs> and why I call it Sunday, Sunday, Dalla Prim is because ASU strike comes when it's cut out to election. Go and check. Okay. It's a soft to blackmail from ASU. Really? I say with every sense of responsibility. How so? And I will tell you why. Uh, there is no doubt about it that the federal government or government at every level has failed in terms of substantial investment in <coughs> education. If you still go to most of our universities at Polytechnic and Monotechnic, you still discover that the syllabus that was used in 1979 still the same one. It's the same thing we're using now. The same kilogram force that we studied in Lambert or studied in uh, PNOKK is what you still study in other engineering stuff and what have you. Nothing has changed. If you go to our laboratories, you still see us working with pendulums. When our mates are writing <coughs> codes and programs to ensure that their world evolves daily, mm -hmm. when there are new developments every day. So there is no doubt about that government at every level has failed. 
Then the next thing is this. Government at every level are decided to also create universities and polytechnic like every year. Mm -hmm. And we are recruiting ASU. Knowing fully well that the current set of workforce are not even well treated, the current capacity for research for program is not enough. That's on the other side. The other part of it again is that it is so interesting that in this tenor, a former ASU member who happens to be the vice president of the country is sitting at the Federal Executive Council, is the chairman of National Exe Economic Council, and is one of the most well read vice presidents, even not on this continent at the moment, understand the challenges of our education system. And then you look at it closely. Check all the 36 states of this country. Virtually all our political class now have one university or, or polytechnic other. that are private. Mm. So the question is this. When yeah. ASU go on strike in Unilag, say for example, do they go to private university next to Ogun State to teach? Mm. So why, in case you want to enforce that government invest in academics, private institutions also has to bear this bond. If we're shutting the education system at the tertiary level, both public and private institution should be completely shut down. Because what we're doing when we say we go on strike is that even the sons and daughters of ASU members are delayed from graduating. Of You say, when you go to banks, that you said 25 and above, don't come. You say, first day, first class, this way. Federal university, this way. First class private school, this way. Above 24, this way. Rest of you, go home. Now, these are things that created. Now, you say we have teaming unemployed number of youth and what have you on the street. How do you stop this? Because don't forget that the, the children that you are asking to stay back at home are not the children of these big boys. They are children of you and I that cannot afford to pay 150 per term or 1 million per term or per session, so they say. Now, how do you now ensure that if son of Mr. President, who happens to be going to a private university in Abuja, is going to school, and the son of P.A. to Mr. President, who does not have money to go to that same school, is not going to school. So, if us want to be sincere with themselves, instead of this Sunday, Sunday, that are print, they must ensure that educational system in tertiary institution across the entire country is shut down. Let me show you. In University of Ife, a few days ago, the president of ASU was saying this, and there's another body they call Con ASU, hmm. something University of Ife in OAU now, hmm. that is saying this. If ASU is not careful, what happened to labor? When you now have TUC, NLC, ULC, mm -hmm. will soon happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see, have some of these lecturers going to private schools to go and end their, their living. But the children of the poor one that cannot afford those schools, what is their stuff? But again, the federal government, uh, and for everybody and for nobody, it is that time Mr. President shows that it's for the children of the poor. You can't be shutting down school every time. You, COVID shut us down for one year. Now, ASU is already threatened that. You can imagine ASU declaring work free day. Mm. In, this, in, a, in an economy whereby our educational, our literacy level is minimum. In terms of enrollment to public and private university is the least. Mm. Yet we are still declaring work freedom when we have wasted it seems in, a, it seems in West Africa, I've checked it, we have the highest number of public holidays as a nation. Mm. Now plus as a free day. So you cannot imagine the trauma you're going to put that parent that is struggling to ensure that that world graduate in the next six months and look for any manager to start sustaining the family. Yet the government in and out start coming and giving us stories. It is a two sided thing for me. Federal government needs to be deliberate about our higher educational system in terms of policy and in terms of remuneration and in terms of funding for research. But nonetheless, as we also need to devise a better means to ensure that this is not what, only punishment. What would that be if ASU is to de devise a better means? If you are going to go on strike, don't also teach in private school. Mm. Yeah. About the university bells will open. American University article will open. So what are we saying? Redeemer University will open. Common University will open. Landmark will open. Technical University will ah. open. ASU people are the ones teaching there, not ghosts. Mm. So if you are going to shut down, let us shut down both public and private institutions so that we know that the rich, both as when the poor is crying, let the rich be crying. If they want to take all their children abroad, let them go. Then it is high time. One of my friends said, it's high time that is the people's act. We stipulate that every public officer should have their words attending public facilities, public hospitals, public schools. 
until we get to that point where as well as for uh, they should not do this uh you task for them they want mm -hmm. to do this whatever they don't want to use the central federal government database system they want to use you task why can't ASU also fight for national assembly to pass a law to ensure that everybody that we are paying with taxpayers money in nigeria attend private public universities public health facilities public transport system by the time we begin to do that all this when you go on strike is it going to affect the senate president daughter or son very soon you see all ministers in london celebrating the graduation of their children have you been to uk embassy lately have you seen how people are queuing there to take visa to to jack every day have you seen what's happening in canada right until we get to that point whereby public officers are compelled to use public facilities as we continue to go on strike Mm. The smarter as people will continue to go and collect money from private institutions, and the poorer Nigerian will continue to generate and will continue to empower a higher number of unemployed youth. And if care is not taken, I don't want to say more than that. Dipa, would we ever get to the point where public officers are forced to ensure that their words, they make mm. use of public, public institutions and, all and facilities? Um, would we ever get to that point? I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. Honestly, honestly, I'm not Nigeria. sure. And and in in the, in in the right frame of things, that is how things should be, because we can always see it even in our transportation system. A few right. days ago, I had a conversation about it about how our transportation system, especially in Lagos, is is just a software head. Hmm. It's 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 just a clear way to show a margin between people who can afford to have a vehicle or people who can't afford to have a vehicle. It's a socio-economic divide. Our public transportation system, and I think it is very appalling. But if we have a public transportation system where both the rich and the poor can have access to it and it can be efficient and it can be effective and even political office holders can make use of it, until then we will not have any serious change in it. It affects various systems, right. healthcare, education. Until they have a personal buy-in, we'll keep having these conversations over and over again. All right, communications expert Dikpo Iwale, as well as in-house analyst Obani Akinwale. Gentlemen, thank you for your time on the program. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much.